Hey class, my name is Mr Thornton and I can help you get that C in your GCSE. This lesson, ionic, covalent and metallic bonding. The first type of bonding that we're going to look at is ionic bonding. Now this always happens between a metal and a non-metal and at GCSE you're going to be dealing with elements from group 1 over on the left hand side of the periodic table and group 7 on the right hand side of the periodic table. A typical uh, combination is sodium and chlorine. Incidentally, I will be assuming that you're comfortable drawing electron diagrams. If not, please look at the previous video, which tells you how to do them. Now remember, when atoms bond to each other, they do so to try and complete their outer shell of electrons. In ionic bonding, the way they do this is one atom will steal electrons off the other. So try and remember that ionic bonding is stealing. The sodium over here has just got one electron in its outer shell, so it only needs to get rid of one. The easiest way to complete its outer shell is to just ditch that one. The chlorine over here, on the other hand, has just got one gap in its outer shell. It just needs one electron, so there's a fairly clear way that they can solve their problems. The sodium gets rid of its electron, and it goes over there to the chlorine. If we add to our diagram to show what's happened, you can see that the sodium has lost one of its electrons represented by that X, and that's moved over to where the chlorine is. So the chlorine now has a complete outer shell, and the sodium has a complete outer shell. There's just one more thing which we need to add to our diagram now. Remember, electrons have a negative charge, so the chlorine, which originally had overall neutral charge, because it's gained this extra negative charge, we put a pair of square brackets around it like this, and we put a little minus there to show that it's got a negative charge. Likewise, the sodium has lost some negative charge, so it's got unbalanced. Only its charge is positive. And that is done. That is all you need to be able to do for ionic bonding. And the thing is, because these two charges are equal and opposite, these two atoms, these two ions we should say now, they're now going to attract each other. And so ions tend to form large crystalline structures, which is exactly what you see with table salt, which is, this is what's going on in table salt, that's what it is. Covalent bonding always happens between two non-metals, and really common ones are carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So I'm going to deal with carbon and hydrogen here. You can see that the carbon's got four gaps in its outer shell, and the hydrogen's got one gap in its outer shell. So where ionic bonding is kind of like one atom stealing an electron off the other, Covalent bonding is more like the two atoms are sharing electrons. So if a hydrogen comes along and meets our carbon, that hydrogen can do this. There's now a pair of shared electrons in that covalent bond. The hydrogen now has two electrons in its outer shell, so its outer shell is complete because you can only fit two electrons in that first shell. The carbon now has one, two, three, four, five electrons in its outer shell. So it's not quite complete. We're going to need some more hydrogen atoms in order to complete this. So if I just add some more into this, each one of those hydrogen atoms now has one electron from the carbon and one electron from itself in its outer shell, and the carbon now has four electrons from, its from itself and four electrons from each one of the hydrogens in its outer shell. So the carbon's got a complete outer shell, the hydrogens have got a complete outer shell each. The only downside is they're now stuck to each other. This, incidentally, is methane, one of the most common covalent molecules which you're going to see. Notice that each covalent bond is a pair of shared electrons. So in each covalent bond, there are two electrons. Sometimes you're going to see some molecules that have a double bond, in which case there's two pairs of electrons, or four electrons altogether. Expect them to ask that on the exam paper. How many electrons are in a covalent bond? And you need to be saying two. The final type of bonding you need to know about is metallic bonding. It only happens in metals, and it's really, really simple. You've just got the positively charged atomic nuclei arranged in a neat pattern, and around that there's a cloud of delocalized electrons just floating around. Now these delocalized electrons just floating around in your metallic structure make metals excellent electrical and thermal conductors. That does crop up a little bit in physics as well. So that's just something to be aware. Brilliant conductors because these electrons can move from one atom to the next really easily. In covalent structures, 
those electrons, they're being shared, they're being held in place. And so covalent structures are normally terrible electrical conductors. All plastics, for example, are covalent structures. And finally, in ionic structures, those bonds are really, really strong when that structure is solid. So salt is incredibly difficult to break apart. You can heat it to thousands of degrees before it starts to melt. Whereas something like a plastic, you can heat to just a few hundred degrees and it'll melt. However, ionic structures are also soluble in water usually. And once they're in water, those charged particles can move around and it'll actually start to conduct. In fact, this is what makes water conductive. So in summary, the three types of bonding which you need to know about, ionic bonds, which is where a group seven atom steals an electron from a group one atom, high melting point, but soluble in water, and then they'll conduct once they're dissolved. Covalent bonds, relatively low melting point. Uh, it's where non-metals are just sharing electrons, but rubbish electrical conductors. And finally, metallic bonds, which is that delocalized cloud of electrons that makes them excellent thermal and electrical conductors. Good luck in your GCSEs, everyone. And remember, if this video was useful to you, like it, share it, and you can subscribe for more all below.